is Randy Hughes, the voice of rock, and you're listening to Music Mania. You ready for some screaming heavy metal? We rock! But the evil that men do lives on. We're gonna bang your You are now listening to the Music Mania Podcast, brought to you by CD Warehouse in Gladstone, the number one hard rock podcast in the Midwest, featuring hard-hitting interviews with rock's living legends. And now, here's your host, Clint Schweitzer. You are locked and loaded right here on the Music Mania Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm your host, Clint Schweitzer. We are off and running here into the spring months. It is the best time of the year. Uh, You get out there, start enjoying some live shows, hit the lake, get out there with your friends, enjoy some cold beverages. This is what it's all about. Uh, The shows are piling up for me, going to be out there uh, touring the country this summer, hitting a lot of shows, doing a lot of interviews. That's what we do here on the Music Mania Podcast. We hope you'll hit that subscribe button on iTunes, Google Play, or Spotify, any way you choose to take in the show. And of course, on this show, it's all about the guests, and we have a huge show. We have two separate interviews and three different guests, because in our first segment, we're going to be joined by none other than Calico Cooper and Chuck Garrick from the band Bisto Blanca. Of course, Chuck Garrick is the bassist in Alice Cooper's band. He's been there for 17 years. Calico is uh, Alice's daughter, of course. They have formed this band called Bisto Blanco. They are about to release their third album. It is called We Are. It is out May 24th via Rat Pack Records. Bisto Blanco's music is influenced by such bands as White Zombie and Motorhead. Their music is a potent mix of heavy riffs, driving bass, and melodic choruses. From the album opener, The Seeker, to the closer, I See You In It, it is clear that Bisto Blanco wear their influence on their sleeves. Tracks like Solitary Rave, Perception of Me, and We Got This showcase that vocal interplay between Garrick and Cooper, something that separates Bisto Blanco from these influences. Cannot wait. They're going to be joining me on the road. They have a show in Washington tonight, so they're uh, on the tour bus, and they're on the road right now with Hillstorm, and um, that tour is going on right now. They're going to be hitting a lot of big places, going to Canada here in the early May, then heading back to America for a run of dates. They're going to be at Rock, Oklahoma um, on Memorial Weekend. Definitely look forward to catching them there. Uh, I love what Bisto Blanco does. It's very in your face. You got the Chuck Garrick, whose style, bass style, and vocal style. You got add Calico Cooper into the mix. Alice Cooper's daughter started her career as a dancer in Alice's show, and it's awesome that they've uh, formed this this band known as Bisto Blanco. And uh, you can get that album. You can actually pre-order it um, on the Rat Pack Records website, ratpackrecords.com slash Bisto Blanco. You can uh, pick that up. Definitely do that. We've seen the video for The Seeker. It is awesome. And I just can't wait to get into this with them. We're going to get into a lot. Um, Alice Cooper, um, one of my favorite artists of all time. Uh, Check's going to be back on tour with uh, Alice this summer, and um, they'll be touring with Hailstorm as well. So really cool connection there. Chuck has got to be the fifth or sixth Alice Cooper band alumni that we've had on the show. We've had, of course, Nita Strauss, Ryan Roxy like a million times. Uh, I know we've had Ken Mary and Kane Roberts. We've had Dennis Dunaway. Gosh, we've we've really run the gamut between eras of Alice Cooper. The only one we've let, yet to talk to is Alice himself. But guys, I am working on that. Uh, for me, I know you know what this is. You guys know the songs on this show. We tell you the stories. This is about the guests. Bring on these uh, individuals, sharing their stories, um, promoting what they have coming out. It's about supporting these artists that are still out there rocking, melting our faces off every night, uh, whether it be through a live show or our on album. We just can't thank them enough. And uh, later on, we're going to be joined by Christopher Bose. He is the singer from Ailstorm and also Glory Hammer. And I tell you what, Glory Hammer, I'm such a huge fan of that visual power metal style. They're going to be here in Kansas City coming up. June 8th at the Riot Room, so we can't wait to get into that with uh, Christopher and talk about this uh, powerful force in the new album that Glory Hammer has coming out called Legends from Beyond the Galactic Terror Vortex. I love that title. The album art itself is amazing, so can't wait to get into all that. Guys, I have so many things coming up. 
A lot of shows. Going to be checking out REO Speedwagon coming up next weekend. We've got Sammy Hagar and The Circle coming up in St. Louis um, on May 18th in Rocklahoma. After that, a string of shows uh, in June and uh, on into the rest of the summer. That's what it's all about for me. I'm hitting the road, and that's what I definitely enjoy doing. It's uh, really, you know, for the summer months. Uh, gosh, I've got Vixen, Firehouse coming up this summer. Cannot wait for those shows. Even a show like, let's see, I've got Third Eye Blind and... Jimmy Eat World coming up. Can't wait to check that out. Was supposed to do Ozzy Osbourne here in Kansas City, but that's been postponed a year due to Ozzy's ailments. So, so much coming up. We've got Alice Cooper, Hellstorm, Bush, and Live, and there's just so much uh, on the horizon for us. And if you like what we do, hit us up at our website, musicmaniapodcast.com, and you can check out all the archives of all the interviews that I've done and all of our shows. I think we're on episode like 130 now. Cannot thank you guys enough for being a part of this journey, helping, you know, let me live my dream because I love these bands. It's all about the artists to me and to be able to provide them a platform and for me to be able to converse with them and share stories and talk about their releases or talk about stories from the past. It's all, that's all it's about for me. I'm so thrilled to be a part of this. It's one of the things I look forward to most about, about life is doing this podcast. And we always appreciate the feedback. So be sure uh, to follow us on Twitter at music mania underscore show. Give us all your uh, feedback, good, bad, and otherwise. And I tell you what, before we get to our interview with Calico Cooper and Chuck Garrett, got to tell you about our sponsor, CD Warehouse in Gladstone, Missouri. Guys, for over 22 years, a staple of the Northland, they buy, sell, and trade CDs, DVDs, vinyl, and more. Do not let the vibe of the old school record store go by the wayside. Give them a visit off Antioch Road in Gladstone today. Tell them Music Mania sent you, or there will be a discount, or it's on us. Welcome, Calico, Cooper, and Chuck Garrick to the Music Mania podcast from the road in Washington. Guys, Everybody's talking about this album, We Are. We've seen the video for The Seeker. Calico, starting with you, tell us a little bit about this album and what fans can expect here. And that's another thing I love about Beats, though, is the lyrics and the songs and the music are just so, it's so intense and it's so ripe for a performance. It's so ripe for, you know, uh, an interpretation of something happening on stage while you're listening to it. So I really enjoy telling the story, you know, not just with my voice, but my body, and people would go, wow, what a great show. And I blacked out. I have no idea what happened that last the hour that we played. <laughs> I, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I tell you, Chuck, this is the, probably the biggest tour you guys have ever done. You guys have had some festivals coming up. You're going to be at Rocklahoma, some really big shows. You're going to be heading to Canada here pretty soon. What's it been like uh, on the road this time, kind of compared to some of the previous tours? And uh, what's this been like for you, especially unveiling some of these uh, new songs in front of uh, in front of these crowds, man? Yeah, we, we've been having a good time. I've been having a blast out here. We wish, you know, we, we want to play longer, and, and, and the, I think that... Uh, you know, we're getting a chance to showcase uh, ourselves to people that have never seen us before. And the nice thing is, and and also the, the cool dilemma that we've come into is that, you know, Hellstorm has been so wonderful to us, and it's, it's been such a great experience. And, you know, you have a set limit. You know, your set list is X amount of minutes long. And, and so how do we give the people that have seen us before, but plus all these new fans, sort of the experience of what it's like to be a, to see a Bisto Blanco show. So we've it's been really fun putting it together and, and we're always wondering like, oh we should do this song and oh we should we do that song and, and it's a good problem to have because when we get to do our longer sets our headlining shows, we we're able to play for sixty, seventy minutes and it and it gives us a chance to sort of open up a little bit. Um, but overall it's just the reaction has been fantastic from the crowd. We love the demographic we're playing in front of, and uh, it's just uh, it's just a really killer tour to be part of. Well, you talked about Hailstorm. You're out with them right now, Chuck. But 17 years as part of the Alice Cooper band, and you're going to be out with Hailstorm again this summer, man. Uh, the Evil Never Rest and the Alice Cooper Camp, man, does it? That's going to be an amazing <laughs> tour, isn't it? Yeah, man. You know what? I mean, you figure. I've always said. You know, I guess you could say it. Rock and roll is my business, and business is good. We're out here kicking ass, and part of being a, a musician is, uh, you know, touring. And uh, I, I will never complain about having, you know, to go do another show. It's just, it, it's awesome, and uh, I can't wait to get, you know, to continue this run with Hellstorm and, and continue the growth, the growth with uh, Pisto Blanco. 
Uh, Calico, what does this album kind of mean to you? Obviously, you have a background in, in dance and, and acting. At what point did you realize, you know what, I, this uh, this music thing's for me and that you were able to, you know, really solidify yourself among some really big-time musicians and heavyweights like a Chuck on bass who's, you know, kind of a legend in that realm. When did you realize that, uh, that you know, you could do this, that the vocals were there, that you could really be a part of something big like this? Um, yeah, it's crazy. I always said, and, and, you know, of course, God loves to make you break promises. I, uh, <laughs> I had said loudly that I never wanted to be in a band. I don't want to be in a band. I don't want to be in a band. It just wasn't for me. And I loved, you know, my dad's music, and I loved listening to you know, friends' bands. I, just, I, I appreciated music, I think, too much to mess it up. I just didn't think that I did, that I had it in me, you know. And, um, you know, Chuck saw something that I definitely didn't see. And uh, so I said, you know, he said, oh, let's do this tour, and we're going to do sort of like a... Mickey and Mallory, like, natural born killers thing, and I said, Chuck, you know I can't sing, right? And he goes, no, you don't think you can sing. I know that you can. So I said, oh, okay, well, I'll try it. And so, you know, first show out, I just opened up my mouth and just came out. And obviously over the last, you know, five, six years we've been doing this, I've definitely honed it. And, you know, the joke at Soundcheck is, you have to check all of my voices. <laughs> because I have the lounge singer voice I use on two. I have that nasty little bisto girl voice that I use on some other ones. I have the full, you know, full Howard metal voice I use on other ones. So we really have to sound check all of my voices. But um, that's it's funny. Cool. Um, yeah, that's not something I definitely didn't see. And so now that he's got me, he's got to try to get rid of me because I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. <laughs> Yeah, definitely not. Uh, Chuck, I tell you, man, um, you see what uh, what the Alice Cooper band, and um, a lot of people believe this is the best band that Alice has ever had uh, with yourself. You know, we've had Ryan Roxy on the show more times than any other guest in the history of this show, and I don't know if that's a good thing or bad thing, but without <laughs> Nita Strauss and uh, Tommy and uh, Glenn, I mean, you guys are really solidified. You've been in there 17 years, but for five years, this band's been together. A lot of people think this is the best Alice Cooper band uh, that, there, that there's ever been. That's going to be a high praise, man. Yeah, man. I mean, listen, bottom line is it, it is a great band, but I have to be honest with you, I've been in it for 17 years, and every member that's come on that stage has been amazing, and uh, and it's always been a great-sounding band. Uh, so, you know, I always give praise to, to Ryan Rossi and Damon Johnson and Carrie Kelly and Eric Stinger and Tommy Cofetta, and I've got to play with the best in the business, man. So every band I've seen, you know, I've come across the week that I've had to see come and go. Uh, I've always thought there's been a great chemistry with whoever's in the band. Yeah, unquestionably so. You know, Calico, you said about the album, I want to get you have you clarify this. You said that this record has teeth. It's got a bite to it that I love. It's messages from the people we see around us every day. Its heartbeat is so loud. Talk about what that means to you and kind of what, uh, you know, just go into that a little further. Well, I mean, really, it's what you guys are telling me. When we sing these songs from the new record, I'm really feeding off of the crowd, and they are hearing us loud and clear. They're hearing the lyrics. They're hearing the message, you know, and they're responding. And so it makes you feel good when you say something and somebody says, yes, back to you. You know, it's a powerful thing. So, I mean, there's the teeth. It's like we were a united front, you know, against oppression, against bullying, against all this, you know, total BS that's happening, and it's like, to see people come together. It's not up, us up on stage and you down there. It's like, we got this. We all together. We are. You know, and so I think when I say it has peace, I feel like looking out on a sea of, like, royal beasts. You know what I mean? Like, and, and it just feels powerful and it feels cool. I think this record has a power and a confidence that the other two definitely we're aspiring and we're reaching to, but I feel like we landed on it on this one. Like, I can only speak for myself, the, the, the couple of songs that I sing, I feel like when I listen to them, I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not unsure. Like, I listen to them and I'm proud. I feel like I said what I wanted to say and the way I wanted to say it and the attitude I wanted to say it, and I'm really proud of it. As you should be. Um, Chuck, for you, 
uh, vocals are something that you get to you get to flex that muscle um, in the Ellis Cooper band, you know, here and there. I uh, heard some great stuff. When I'm always a big fan of uh, when you did uh, ESP. Uh, you always kind of have that Gene Simmons kind of gravelly voice. Uh, songs like you did War Machine, I think, on ESP Live in Japan. Great stuff. Kind of talk about your vocals and being able to express that more on an album like this and in Bisto Blanco, where you find that voice and kind of, uh, you know, how it all comes about. Yeah, man, I've never been a Somebody who's been a trained singer, I've never thought I don't I don't sing as good as I can. I just sing as loud as I can, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to lie, man. Yeah, I'm a fan of Gene Simmons. I'm a fan of Billy Gibbons and, you know, a fan of that vocal style and, uh, you know, a little bit more grit, dirt to it and, um, you know, stuff. So I, I you know, I, I, uh, forever searching to find my voice I feel and, and that was the fun thing about working on this last record with Ryan Green which was you know he really helped me define that a little bit more and helped me you know try different things and push me to try different things and sing different ways and um, and, it, and it helped me it helped me to strengthen my voice out here on the road and, and, and keeping myself you know in good shape and, and um, you know making sure I'm able to bring it every night you know what's funny? If you're Gene Simmons, and I'm totally Paul Stanley. Think about it. Like, yeah. And I'm like, yeah. I hadn't thought of it that way. I love uh, that. I I just saw the I, kiss. I, <laughs> That's hilarious. I can't do shit. Derek, stay home. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to use that comparison going forward. I hadn't thought of that. I just saw the Kiss into the road tour, and I see the comparison now. They've 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 been 50 years though together. You guys, you know, got a little more time, but hey, it's all going good, guys. I can't thank you enough for joining me. Have a kick-ass show tonight in Washington. We're going to see you guys here at Rocklahoma in just a few weeks' time. Uh, just love you guys so much. You can pre-order the album the right at uh, ratpackrecords.com slash Bisto Blanco. Do it now because it uh, melts your. It's going to melt your guys' faces off. Thank you guys so much. I love you both. Thank you. Thanks so much to Calico Cooper and Chuck Garrick uh, for joining me from the road. They've got a show tonight in Washington. Uh, be sure that you go to their website, uh, bistoblanco.com. You can get all the tour dates. Uh, info how to pre-order the new album, which comes out on May the 24th. It is called We Are. We're so excited for them. And now as we move on to our uh, next guest here on the podcast, guys, the band is Glory Hammer. The mighty warriors of the galaxy, Glory Hammer, are about to return from another epic quest as they come bearing their latest album, Legends from Beyond the Galactic Terra Vortex. Amazing title. It's due out late spring 2019 via Napalm Records. Legends from Beyond the Galactic Terra Vortex will tell the whole story of the most gigantic battle of all time. Guys, Christopher Bose, he's also the singer in the band Ailstorm. We're talking about power metal to the umph degree, the visuals, the sonic masterpiece that is Glory Hammer. Legends from Beyond the Galactic Terra Vortex. It's coming up. It is going to be huge, and we're going to be talking with Christopher about that. Christopher, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. And I tell you what, before anything else, we're excited. Here in Kansas City, brother, we're going to have you guys here um coming up here in june man it's uh the show's coming up june 19th we got you uh, june 8th i'm sorry here in kansas city Here's yes yes yeah, it's gonna be fun first uh first glory hammer headlining tour is gonna be a bit of a blast i think yeah this whole thing you guys are gonna be in um kind of in, in america in june how do you feel about kind of kicking this thing off uh in america before before heading over to europe <laughs> inevitably here coming up yeah, it's quite cool. It's because it's going to be the first uh, the first tour we do with the uh, the new album that comes out. The album will actually only come out of what was it three four days before the tour. So um, I guess there's going to be this thing going on the tour that you know, as at the start, people only know the songs, but maybe the shows at the end, people might be singing along a bit more. We'll see. But yeah, it's it's we've never done a uh, you know we've never done a headline tour in the states, so it's kind of cool to start the whole album cycle off there. So yeah, it's going to be exciting. Well, uh, of course, the album is Legends from Beyond the Galactic Terror Vortex. I love that name. Great title. Um, talk about this album. And it's uh, it's been, uh, what, four years since you guys released your last one. Uh, kind of talk about how you kind of built off the last release and, and kind of what uh, fans can expect out of you guys this go around. Yeah, it's like um, when we think back to where the band was when the last album came out, which is the Space 1992 album, which was in... Uh... 2015 that came out we were still like a very much a small time sort of band just you know chugging by you know not doing very much playing small shows and it's, it's weird to think that in the four years since then like the band has like gone up at least in europe has gone up massively in terms of you know production the, the size of the crowds that come along all this cool stuff so it's very exciting to be like you know obviously 
starting the next chapter from a much higher place than we were before and we're seeing all the cool things that will happen like you know we're expecting a whole bunch of sold out shows and crazy stuff and all, all the stuff that comes with the new album like you know like chart positions and all this oh wow you've got the best album of the year all that sort of nonsense all the cool stuff that comes and it's um yeah so it's, it's been a very long five years it feels five four years four years yeah it doesn't feel like that long it feels like you know we only, i really wrote the last album like last year but I guess I've been going back and forth writing Glory Hammer albums and then writing albums from my other band, Ailstorm. So uh, time just really flies. And uh, yeah, but it's great to get back with the new stuff because we've been playing the same material for what, three, four years now, all the exact same songs. And because we didn't have many songs, you know, there wasn't much we could change up. But now that we've got a whole bunch of new stuff, it's going to just bring a whole new energy to the live show. And that's going to be cool. This has become, Chris, more more than just a side project for you. Of course, a lot of people know you um, as the vocalist from Ailstorm, but uh, Glory Hammer has become, become a big deal. You guys have a lot of tour dates. You guys have dates booked through February of 2020. This is more than just a side project for you. I know. It's, it's, it's kind of got out of control because uh, the, the idea was when I started it, it was going to be a side project. Like we do, you know, maybe a couple of cool festivals here and there and nothing too much. It would be something easy to do in the spare time between Ailstorm. But yeah, it, it unfortunately got really popular and I didn't know what to do with it. So um, yeah, it, it's become a bit of a logistical chaos running two bands at once, but it, it's working out fine. Yeah, there's like, there's, there's even like, Glory Hammer's even going to places that Ailstorm hasn't been yet. Like there's countries that Glory Hammer does first now because there's, there's so much demand for the band. It's ridiculous. There's just so much going on with it. It's quite cool. Talk about the visual aspect of this band. When you talk about, you know, um, you know, power metal and the imagery that it kind of evokes. Talk about for you guys, of course, you guys full costumes, full regalia, full on characters. Uh, you play the uh, Zargo Thrax, of course. And <laughs> what? Uh, how important visually is this? What can kind of fans on the on the live show expect from the visual experience from you guys? Yeah, I mean the uh, well, the power metal that we grew up listening to was um, from the late '90s, like bands like Rhapsody, who. And, and other bands like that who like they were all about this big fantasy story and dressing up as like you know frilly shirts and things and we, and we that was for us like power metal always meant sort of fantasy metal so we just wanted to like expand on that and take it to its logical conclusion which is just us actually being the characters on stage and having all these ridiculous daft costumes and it's just taking it to the complete over the top level as we can go and um yeah, the, the costumes are definitely getting a lot more elaborate. You know, before it used to be a couple of cheap Halloween store things that we'd throw together, and they're all very light and very cheap. And it was, they, they, in a way, those old costumes were kind of good because you know because they were so lightweight, they didn't like weigh you down on stage. Now we've all got these really elaborate pieces of leather armor. Like um, Jim, our bass player, is covered in fur, and it's like three or four different separate pieces he's got to put on and it's just this ridiculously complicated thing that we can't even dress ourselves anymore we have to help each other get into our stupid costumes so that's um yeah we're waiting for the first shows to see how that works because you know like i say we've never played in these uh, new costumes and it could be absolutely impossible for all we know we might turn out get on stage and realizing we can't even move because we're covered in like so many layers of ridiculous leather and robes and stuff but it, it's definitely gonna you know the, the visual aspect is a huge part of the band and we have we have these mad dreams for the future of just having these a huge stage show with a castle and like flamethrowers and all this cool stuff and we want our singer tom to be flying and all these mad things but you know that's that's going to come with time hopefully uh maybe even bring back the dragon from dio's sacred heart tour i would love to see that back out there well, you know, I know sometimes I go to Walmart and in the inflate, like in right about Halloween in the inflatable section, they have these huge inflatable dragons. I don't know if you've seen them. Like they're yeah. like 20 feet tall. I'm thinking, God, we, we could do that. We could just stick one of those on stage. <laughs> but, you know, we'll see. That'd be great. That would be so great. Um, Obviously, you're the, the singer uh, in, in Ailstorm. Talk about what uh, vocalist in here uh, in Glory Hammer, what uh, Thomas Winkler kind of brings to this band. Uh, kind of his vocal style compared to yours, and uh, just talk about him and what he brings to to Glory Hammer. Well, the the main thing is he can sing. Uh, that's the the big difference. Because um, obviously my my when I started Ailstorm, I wasn't really a singer. I just sort of happened to fall into the role. Like I'm you know I'm a keyboard player by trade who ended up behind a microphone, and it sort of all developed it naturally from there with a really weird sort of kind of half shouting, half screaming, half singing vocal style. But you know that means with with Ailstorm, we don't. We currently have two complicated vocal melodies because I can't do them. But with Glory Hammer, that, that was the whole reason I wanted to start that band was to be able to explore a more sort of melodic and like over the top musically side of music. So um, 
yeah, Tom could sing anything you throw at him. We just, we just used to write these ridiculous melodies that go all over the place, and he just sings them, and it's great. It's just such a, it makes such a change being able to have the vocals sort of lead the music instead of with Hailstorm, where it's just the vocals sort of just sit on top of the music, just kind of vaguely. So it's a very, um, it's a very different songwriting dynamic with that band, and it's it's just all thanks to having a singer like Tom, to be honest. Well, I'm telling you, I'm such a huge fan of, uh, of, of uh, you know, imagery and music and visuals. I'm just such a huge Kiss fan for everything from Kiss to Lizzie Borden and Wasp and bands like that. And the album covers are so important to me, of course. Iron Maiden, Derek Biggs, the work he did with Iron Maiden. This um, upcoming album, Legends from Beyond the Galactic, Terror Vortex, this cover is outstanding. Um, just building off kind of what you guys had done before. This is kind of a just an almost a apocalyptic sort of look uh you've got the pyramids in the background you've got some this is just a, a wasteland it looks amazing just talk about this album cover kind of how it came about yeah well we used our our usual artist now his name's dan goldsworthy he drew our last two albums he also did the last Storm album as well he's this guy from scotland and he really he really really understands glory hammer 100 percent. like he's totally into the whole theme and everything of it and yeah we just told him Basically, obviously, we always let them go crazy. But you know, with our last two albums, it was if you look at them, it's just it's a background with like a dude standing in the front center. We thought for this one, we wanted to do something more sort of a more grandiose, epic approach. So there's no real centerpiece or like so it's just this vast open vista of evil. You know, with like there's like a little silhouetted wizard at the front and this huge castle and all these pyramids and stuff. And that's he just captured it perfectly. He actually um he actually sent us a. a a couple of options to choose from as a you know, little first drafts but the other one he drew it was basically a hundred percent ripoff of the uh album cover of power slave by iron maiden you know with all the pyramids and the and the sphinx and stuff it just looked identical to that like imagine imagine power slave album cover but it was red and it had an evil wizard on it instead of a sphinx eddie and it was just literally that so he said yeah it's cool but we can't do that. So he drew this new thing with his vast open plains of epicness. And we thought, you know what, let's just make the logo really small and up in the corner. Just have this sort of vastness just, just to convey how epic it all is. I think it comes across really well. It does, exactly. That's, it definitely comes to mind. And I think that's what's great that we're discussing this because I feel like that's something that's lost uh, in, in, in a lot of music today. Obviously in the genre that you're in, um, that it, the visuals, it's all very prevailing, but um, in general, you know, you, because music is so assumed in so many different ways, you don't always get this type of, uh, of you know, engagement with, with the art. Um, this album comes out on May 31st. Um, kind of talk about the kind of the, the, the way the landscape, uh, obviously, I'm assuming it'll be available digital, physical, kind of how, how did you guys uh, proceed with that? And how are we going to be able to get this thing? Oh, yeah. Once again, it's coming out through uh, Napalm Records and the the. They have distribution worldwide. You can get it in America, you can get it in Europe, you can get it all over the world. And yeah, we're doing all the usual formats. I've got CDs, I've got digipacks um, with a bonus disc. And the bonus disc on the special edition is actually just the orchestral tracks of the album because our drummer, Ben, he does all the crazy orchestra work and he and it's it's ridiculous the amount of detail on these orchestra tracks that are in the backing but of course when you throw them into a big metal mix a lot of it gets lost all little small details get hidden behind guitars and drums and vocals so that's why the bonus disc is just the orchestra and you can hear all this mad sort of over the top super detailed nonsense that goes on and um which is cool and we also have like you know this vinyl because everyone loves vinyl these days and some ridiculous wooden box set that's um well it's got all these cool stuff in it and things um it also is available on cassette if you're uh if you're someone who only has a cassette player you can get the album believe it or not and that's uh yeah it's every format everywhere in the world you can get it that's amazing i you know i was uh i wasn't sure and now to literally know that you're running the full gambit there just is amazing i Love the cassette idea, actually, because um, that was kind of my indoctrination to music. I never, I was like too young for for vinyl, and so I had I had cassette tapes. I still have all my VHSs too. Damn it, I'll stand by that. Uh, so, Chris, what you um, obviously a lot going on. Uh, Glory Hammers, we got a new album. This tours, you got a lot of dates. What's next for Ailstorm? Um, currently writing a new album. Uh, we're gonna do some stuff. Uh, we're planning on going to the studio next January for release sometime early next summer but yeah right now it's just writing songs we've got a bunch of festivals as well you know and some tours and things we got to keep ourselves busy for the year but mostly i'm um, trying to concentrate on writing that's my main uh my main objective for this year and once we've got that done yeah it's gonna start all over again another big mad album cycle and 
touring around the world nonstop. So yeah, keeping myself very busy. Yeah, that's that's the plan, right? Well, absolutely. I tell you what, the uh, website is gloryhammer.com. You can uh, see how to uh, to get a hold of this album and uh, um, Napalm Records, of course. Amazing distribution, like you said. We partner with them quite frequently on on lots of events, lots of things. And of course, if you're in the Kansas City area listening where we are, uh, the riotroom.com, that's where you can get tickets to the Glory Hammer, Aether Realm, and Pulchera Marte show here in Kansas City. We're excited about that. Excited to have you here, Christopher. We'll see you here in Kansas City in, in June, my friend. It's coming up. Can't wait to catch up then, man. See you there. Thank you very much. Cannot thank Christopher Bowes enough for joining us, talking about um, Glory Hammer's latest album, it is called Legends from Beyond the Galactic Terror Vortex. I can't stop saying it. It's like the greatest title known to man. The album cover is awesome. The tunes are great. Glory Hammer. If you're into that epic power metal, then you look no further than Glory Hammer and be sure to check out this new album. We can't thank you guys enough for joining me here on the Music Mania podcast. It is uh, always awesome. It is a, the spring and summer months are my favorite. Out there on the road, te- checking out the live bands doing reviews, doing interviews, love keeping busy. It's what it's about for me. I love traveling this country, love hitting the highways and byways, love going to all the uh, the, re- the little restaurants, the dives, the stops along the way. It's what it's all about for me, and I can't wait to get out there and, and get some reviews up on the site. MusicManiaPodcast.com is where you can check us out. Be sure to subscribe uh, to this podcast on Spotify, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts. It's available on all three. If you have a smartphone, you have access to this show. Guys, we can't thank you enough for joining us. Next week, we're going to be talking with a very special guest. In fact, it is bassist Peanut from the band 311 talking about their new album, their upcoming summer tour. Yes, it's going to be all 311 with uh, Peanut, and we can't wait to do that next week. But uh, until then, can't thank you enough for joining us here on the Music Media Podcast, where you already know the songs. On this show, we tell you the stories.